Hey, welcome to another live stream here on Free Will Photos. I was having a little bit of technical difficulties this morning, but all is going to be well. Today, I truly don't have a specific lesson. More so, I just want to kind of take you behind the scenes of what I go through whenever I'm selecting a photo to edit, and then the multiple pieces of software that I use to edit my photos ultimately. And that's what I'm going to be walking through today in this live stream. And, you know, if there's questions that come up along the way, then please, by all means, drop them into the chat or into the, uh, I was going to say the description box. Drop them into the comments section below. Now, before we dive too deep into editing photos, I do want to make you aware of a few deals that are going on here in, uh, you know, Cyberland, if you will. So the first one, there's a deal going on with Boris FX. I'm not affiliated with this company. I just really do use the software. And today I'll probably go through using this particular piece of software because it's something that I really, really enjoy using. And I just tell everyone about it whenever I get an opportunity to tell them, you know, hey, what's some of the software that you're using? But check it out. They have a deal going on right now. Uh, you can save a little bit of money as opposed to paying the full price of 149 US dollars, depending on where you live, that currency may be different. I'm not affiliated with them. The other three that I am going to share with you, I am affiliated with. And if you use the links in the description box below, then I do get a small commission. So the next one is going to be Luminar Neo. And they have a huge deal going on if you are interested in getting Luminar and you have ever been interested in getting Luminar, then here's a fantastic deal. Uh, it's 82% off for 24 months. And essentially you get Luminar Neo for, you know, this is the subscription model. You get uh, Luminar Neo at the $119, but then you get all the creative assets for uh, essentially free. So. If you were ever thinking about getting a subscription to Luminar, then you can do so and save a little bit of money. However, if you are not into subscriptions, and I fully understand that, and I support that, they still offer a lifetime with the extensions, and here is the price that they have for you. Instead of paying $600 up front, you pay $149. Essentially, you get all of these things for $149, all right? You get the creative assets pass um, or assets collection, the 23 to 24 creative journey, you get that included. And for those of you who don't know what the creative journey pass is, this is what gives you access to all of the um, extensions and any of the new extensions that are released in that year. Now, you will have to purchase either the extensions standard or outright, which you can do and you can still do that, or you continue renewing this pass and it gets you access to all of those, uh, those extensions. But what it also gives you is access to use the uh, Luminar Neo uh, Swap AI or Gen Swap AI and the gen erase ai all right and you can't use those tools unless you one have an internet connection and two you are either subscribed or you have this creative journey pass for anyone who's on the standalone if the if there's any questions on that just drop it in the comment section and i'll do my best to answer those or at least point you in the right direction then we have on one photo raw 2024 this is by far my favorite piece of software I use it on all of the photos. In fact, we're going to start inside of Photo Raw 2024. Uh, they are also having a deal this Friday, and that deal is somewhere on here, I thought. And like I said, I was having technical difficulties, so I had to restart my uh, computer. There we go. This is the page that I really wanted to get to. Uh, the link in the description will take you to that first play page. Just click the little yellow thing that says Friday deal, and you'll come to a page that looks like this. And essentially, this is the same deal or uh, savings, if you will, that you received in 
the pre-order for 2024, $149 instead of paying $200 for the max version. But if you don't need the max version or have any care for the max version, you can get the outright version for $80. And this is not an upgrade price. The upgrade price is $63.99. So depending on if you already own Photo Raw 2023 and you want to upgrade to 2024, you're waiting for the deal. Here's your deal for upgrading if you just want it 2024. But if you want the max version, which has the plug-in capability, then that's where you'll pay $129 US. I understand, depending on where you live, that may be a different price based on your currency and the economy that you're, you're in. But for US dollars, it is $129 uh, one-time fee in order to get on one for the raw 2024. All right. Um, now, if you are into subscriptions, then it's $12.50 a month or $17.99 a month, depending on which one you want to go with. If you are going for the plus membership, which if you're, in my opinion, if you're going to go for any one of the subscriptions, I recommend the plus subscription, not because it's the most expensive, but purely because you get access to on one plus membership. And that membership alone is worth the value. And, you know, you get the software, but the membership, it gets you access to a lot of things, um, training tutorials, bookshelf items, so different books and catalogs, and you get access to exclusive trainings inside of the Plus membership. Uh, you also get presets and other assets and things of that sort. So that membership, it really is a huge value for the price. But if you're not into any of that, then you can also get the on one everything that's on sale right now. And, you know, this is still a great subscription. The other thing for the plus membership is the storage. You get one terabyte of cloud storage. If you use two computers, I don't recommend mobile. But if you use two computers, you can absolutely use this. I, I use it between my main station here and when I'm traveling, my laptop. And that's how I kind of edit photos and stuff of that sort. So highly recommend that. And then last but not least is DxO is having a 50% off sale. And this, you know, not everything is 50%. Uh, some of the things are not quite 50, right? Um, like, don't believe that this is 50. This is, anyway, not as important, all right? It's up to 50% off, all right? However, I use DxO software on a lot of my edits, and I can't recommend them enough. Now, I just recently started using Photolab, and I'm still learning it, and I'm enjoying the, the journey there. Not ready to showcase everything just yet, but I am working on bringing whatever my workflow is there out into the community. So uh, stay tuned for that. So now that we got all of those deals out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into on one. And let's edit some photos because, you know, that, that's kind of the whole premise of this morning's live stream. I just wanted to share what some deals were out there in uh, cyberspace, so to speak. So here is the folder from the Build Expo. I told you I have a ton of images. Uh, there's a total of 3,000 images in this one folder. I've only edited a handful of them. And today, you know, I was inspired as I was sitting at this train station and I haven't even selected an image yet. So what I wanted to do today was kind of just go through here and maybe uh, select a few images, edit them, talk about what my thought process is when I'm going through the edit process and how I plan to uh, go with that. So um, the first one that kind of sticks out to me, and let me, oh, let me put this into film strip because I think that that will be helpful. And then I will close down this left pane and yeah, I'm not 
blocking anything here. So this first one, you know, I was kind of just inspired by this light that was coming out from the top of the uh, entry point here or the exit point, however you want to look at it. Uh, and then using the divider in the room as like a foreground element to kind of force you up into the photo because, you know, this there's not much going on down here. It's out of focus and the main focus is happening here. Um, what I'm not a fan of is some of these items like this particular, um, what do we call this, uh, security camera and this fire alarm aspect. So this is one of those photos that I would take into Photoshop to get rid of uh, those items. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that just because that's how I would start with this particular image. Um, I'm going to edit this raw first, and then I'm going to do that. But uh, that is one of the first things that just stick out to me that I need to modify. So what I'm going to do is double click on the image here. This is going to open it up and I'll just go ahead and close this film strip because I don't need film strip anymore. We'll let that analyze for a second. And then eventually, when it's done analyzing, I'll go ahead and close the film strip so that way I can work on the overall image. And the beauty of this is I can use Brilliant AI. This was a raw file, so I'm going to have a lot of latitude to really uh, modify this and manipulate it the way that I want to. I really enjoy that. And look at that. I think that this is looking pretty good already by itself. Um, maybe need to work on the color just a little bit. It seems a little too uh, orangey, just a little bit. So maybe pull that down because I kind of like the more faded or less saturated look on this particular image because that's what I care about, you know, overall in the photo. Uh, the good news is it looks like no noise AI act activated on this uh, photo. So here's the before version and here's the after. Uh, it didn't do the before with the no noise, but okay. So I like what I have going on here. And now it is time to go and get rid of some of those distractions. And so let's go ahead and do that. And the way that I do that again, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the check mark here. This is going to take me back to the browse section. And then I'm going to right click on the image so I can get my pop up window and I'm going to navigate to open in Photoshop 2024. So that way I can get rid of some of those things. Uh, send to Adobe Photoshop 2024. I should get a pop up here that asks me how do I want to send this into Photoshop uh, and I always send it as a TIFF. That's what I like to work with. And then from there, we're going to actually start to modify a lot of things. So my workflow has really not transformed, but it has turned into using Photo Raw to import or ingest my files, catalog my files, uh, do all kinds of administrative things and organizational things. So that way I know where to find my files. But then I'm going into other programs after I've done my raw edits. And sometimes I'll even do everything purely inside of on one. But in this case, I need to do some cleanup work. And I prefer to use Photoshop to do my cleanup work. There are some things that you can do in on one to clean up your uh, your work. And in fact, I'll just duplicate this layer and label this one clean or a cleanup. And essentially, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here, maybe a little bit more. What I want to do is just paint over loosely this uh, camera because I don't like this camera. And, or, and I say paint over, I meant to say make a selection. And I also don't like this fire 
device, whatever, a uh, fire alarm. I don't know what that is. And I'll go ahead and click generative fill. And then I'm just going to hit generate and watch both. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I uh, accidentally forgot to hold down the modifier key to select multiple things. So I got to do this twice, but that's okay. Anyway, all I'm doing here is just trying to clean up the image overall. So we'll come back over here and then I'll lasso around this. And, you know, this works quite well. I like the results that I get and I only do this on a handful of images. And I really do this now when I don't want to be bothered with anything else like some some software like i said i could have gotten rid of this inside of on one that would have taken a lot of time uh this actually works pretty well let me see if this one no i don't like what it's doing on the sign i like this one so i'll go with that and i think that that works out pretty good and I'm not going to worry about this wheelchair and anything else that's going on in here um, because probably during the edit that's going to get you know swapped around anyway although there is this little piece up here that i think i could do without so let me just get rid of that and you know this is all subjective your photo may not need it but this is kind of my thought process. I want to clean up as much as possible before I start to deep dive into the edit. And, you know, this I think looks great. Whatever it, what it did here is just fantastic. So I'm happy with those results. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Why did you not zoom out? Okay. There we go needed to step back a little bit. So now I'm at the point of saying, what is it that I want to do to this photo? And I think that this, this photo can benefit from some work inside of Luminar. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command, Option, Shift, and E to create a stamped layer. And I'm just gonna label this Luminar neo and then i'm going to right click this and convert it to a smart object this gives me the capability of coming back to the file later down the line and making edits as i see fit or as i need to and i enjoy working this way so now what i'm going to do is come up to filter sky loom and then luminar neo and this is going to open up luminar and we're going to go to town with editing. And inside of Luminar, I think what I want to do is add in some atmosphere because I think that this particular photo could really uh, benefit from some atmosphere. Uh, so we'll just ha have some fun with it. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think sometimes we get into photo editing and we think like, oh man, I have to do like, the most phenomenal job ever. And I don't think that that's true. I think you should just do something that complements the overall image. And hopefully that's something that we're gonna be able to do here. So I'm not gonna worry about tone and color because I've already dealt with the tonality and I'll deal with color on a separate occasion. However, what I want to do is let's go with mystical and see if this does us any good. So if I pull up on the mystical slider here, I kind of like what it's doing as far as like adding in this soft glow. If I turn it off and turn it back on, it is a fairly, it's obvious, but it's also natural and it's subtle. And I think it complements the overall look of the image. So I'm actually going to go with that. But I'm going to mess around a little bit with the shadows just to see if in the darkest areas, if I need to open those or maybe because, you know, it was early in the morning. It was early in the morning 
and I had just had a cup of coffee. I was sitting in this train station waiting to catch my train to uh, ride into New York City. And, you know, I remember the story, but how do I tell that story? And I think the way that I do that is through, you know, the environment that I create around the overall image. Uh, now, the softness aspect, I can make it a little bit more crisp by pulling to the left. And I think that that does kind of help a little bit. Um, but if I pull it to the right, I can make it just a little bit more soft. And, you know, Mystical is just one of those uh, tools that you got to play around with, see if it works for your overall image. And if it does, then great. And if not, then OK, not a problem. At least I don't think it's a problem. So I think that, you know, turning this off and turning it on, I think that this is working out quite well. So I'm going to go with it. Now, what I think I could also do with this image is make it a little bit matte. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this matte button here. And I'm going to, and if you don't know what matte means, it just means that it's kind of like a faded, more powder, uh, powderish -y look. And I don't know if powderish is the right uh, terminology, um, but it's going to increase brightness in the image a little bit, but it's going to make it a little bit less uh, saturated and a little bit less contrasty. And if I pull this up all the way, you can see the contrast is gone from the image all, you know, completely. I'm not a fan of that. I like a little bit of it just to give like a kind of a throwback vibe, uh, if that makes sense. And, you know, that, that's kind of where I'm going with this. So, you know, in the train station early in the morning, kind of throwback vibe-ish, uh, concept. So I'll go with that and, you know, I'll pull up on the vividness just a little bit because I do like what it does with the richness in here. Um, and, you know, I can tolerate it everywhere else. So that's okay. I think that that works. Now, you know, this is where you get to kind of just make fun. And this is where Luminar can be a lot of fun to play with, is Relight AI. So the lighting, you know, it's really bright up here. The focus is really here, or at least I think the focus should be here. So how do I, you know, make that a thing? Now, I can manually do that, but sometimes using these AI tools, or at least these AI sliders, they can be very helpful. So I'm just going to go with brightness far and see if that grabs anything. It doesn't seem to. Wonder if by modifying the depth. Yeah, so what this is seeing is this little line here is the brightness near. And that is, you know, whatever it is, it is the brightness near. Uh, and that's not really working, so I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll just go ahead and reset you and close you down because it's not going to help me with anything. Um, maybe throw in a little bit of drama. And to me, the, the drama aspect, it just kind of brings this contrast. If you're familiar with using the um, cross, not cross processing, bleach bypass. If you use familiar to using the bleach bypass, this does a similar effect. It's not the same, uh, but it does a similar effect as far as like increasing the contrast. And I enjoy just having some fun with this tool. All right. Doesn't always work, but I think for this image going before and after, uh, it kind of gets rid of that that vibe that we were creating earlier. So I don't want to be counterproductive to, you know, the blurriness that we were adding or the haziness. So let's go atmosphere and maybe we'll go, we'll go with fog for now. And I'll just pull up on the overall amount and see. So this photo itself doesn't have much depth. 
So maybe something like that works pretty well. If I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it really brightens up this area, and I'm not a fan of that area being brightened. So maybe I don't like this. So I'm gonna turn this off. And this is how I go through editing my files. I don't always have a perfect plan before I start going. I just start working and I find what I, I think uh, works out. So let's go with landscape and see if adding in a little bit of golden hour, uh, sometimes this can be fun to add in and it just brings a different sort of charm. You know, just having fun with tools that are available to us to see what I can do uh, and you know what works, what doesn't work. So if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see it just adds a little bit, but I don't really care for that. So I'm gonna turn that off as well. Um, let's go into Enhance AI, because sometimes the Enhance AI actions uh, work out pretty well. And I think that these are kind of cool. So let's just go ahead and pull up on Enhance AI. Just a touch here, and we'll turn this off and turn it on. And I like what it's doing. It's bringing a little bit of crispness to the image. So we'll leave that as is uh, right there. And that's essentially where I think I'll stop. Sometimes I like to come into color harmony, especially if I'm working on something that is full of colors and things of that sort. Give me one second, I'm gonna check the audio, make sure. Everything is still coming through. Okay. I know I've been having audio issues with my live stream, so I just want to make sure that all of that is coming through appropriately. So if I pull down on the brilliance and pull up, I actually like what the brilliance is doing here. And let's see. No, uh, I don't think I need to really mess with that. So we'll we'll leave it. We'll leave it like so, all right? I think that that came through pretty well. So this is what we came into Luminar Neo with, and this is what we're going to leave Luminar Neo with. And I like what I have here. If I don't like something, I can always come back later because I created a smart object. So that's gonna give me the opportunity to come back and modify this particular portion of the edit down the line all right so i should get the results from luminar neo right here and i think that that looks really really good if i turn this off turn it off turn it on you can see what we got going on here and i'm actually really happy with this particular edit so now i think it's time to really hone in where the viewer's eyes should go in the image. And I want that to be right here in the middle. Now, there's a few different tools that you could use to do this. You could stay right inside of Photoshop like so. So let me go ahead and hit Command, Command Shift E. And this just allows me to create a, another stamp layer so I'm not messing up that smart object layer. And I am going to label this one camera raw and I'm going to come up to filter and then camera raw filter and this is actually a largely actually let me create a smart object for this as well so that way I can come back and modify this down the line if you don't create smart objects you end up uh, not being able to come back and modify something down the line and I like to have that creativity. I like to work as non-destructive as possible whenever I'm using photo editing software. So now I have this particular uh, train gate, if you will. And uh, what I think needs to happen is I need to darken pretty much everything around this gate. So I'm just going to come over to the mask layer here, or the mask feature, whatever, grab a radial adjustment, click and drag right over this area. And 
This is essentially me making a vignette, if you will. Let's go ahead and invert this. There it is, there we go. So we'll invert that. And you can see how this is turning the overall uh, photo, you know, a little bit more dramatic. Now, let me turn off this filter or this mask, I should say. We'll create a new mask and this time we'll do linear gradients and I'll pull in from the side here and we'll pull that down. We'll add to this, add linear gradient. This time we'll come up from the bottom and then add linear gradient and we'll pull in from this side as well. Maybe do something like that. And let's just back that off a little bit. Maybe pull this one up. Yeah. So now we're getting a little bit closer to where I would like to be with this edit. Maybe something like that. And then just drag this up. Uh, rotate. And I think that this looks pretty good, right? Because what I've what I've effectively been able to do is hone in, we'll just Okay, yeah. So what I've effectively been able to do is hone in a little bit more of the attention right into the center column there. I think I still need to address this very bright spot up here at the top. And I'll do that with a brush. So we'll hit the plus, click to add a brush. And I'm just gonna pull down exposure and highlights a little bit there. We'll resize this brush a little bit. Let's make sure we have, yep, feathers at 100. Okay, so I'm just gonna come over and brush into this area. And then, I guess I need to pull down on the exposure a lot more. And, you know, I think something like that looks pretty good, right? It doesn't have to be over the top crazy. And I'll probably even come down here and modify some of the clarity because I feel like it can use some clarity. Let's see what texture does. Yeah, make it pop a little bit, right? So now that looks pretty good. I need to work on this particular gate. And the way that I'm going to work on that is add another mask. This time it's going to be a brush as well. And I am going to increase the exposure just a little bit and just go ahead and paint over this area. Maybe something like that. And we'll increase the exposure. And like I've said before, whenever you increase exposure, you need to make sure contrast stays in the areas that you're increasing the exposure on. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down on the blacks and you'll see that that brings that contrast back into the image. And that's kind of the goal here. I want to bring the contrast back into the image. We'll maybe close down on some of the shadows because I'm okay with it being a little bit more shadowy. Uh, and I'm not gonna worry about the highlights too much. And then let's see, I wanna do something about this light in the background. So we'll make another adjustment. And this time we're gonna go Let's go with luminance range, and then I'm just gonna click right there. And this is gonna select the entire image, so to speak. Uh, and I think I'm actually targeting the area that I want. Yeah, we'll pull it like so. And then I need to get rid of everything except for in there. So I'm gonna go with subtract and then grab a brush. And I'm going to make a pretty large brush because I don't think I'm going to paint over that. And 
I'm just going to paint away. Why is this giving me such a hard time? Flow 100. I just want this all to go bye bye. Talking like a kid, but I don't want to impact any of this over here. All I want is that little sliver, if you will. And just trying to resize my brush. My computer's lagging behind, and I don't know why that's happening. I don't need to modify any of that or any of this. So I think I have cleaned up the mask good enough for what I'm trying to do. I just want to get into this little area back here. So I'm going to pull down on the exposure and pull down on the highlights. Maybe pull down a little bit more on the exposure. And I'm going to come back up here to the luminance. And I am going to spread this out. So it's selecting more. And I think that is more appropriate to what I'm trying to do. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that it's just dampening the brightness in that one little space. And that is my overall goal, is to dampen the brightness in that area. So now I think I can hit OK because I have the overall uh, focus going into the areas that I want. And now I think it's time to decide if I want to do something more with this image. And I'm going to go ahead and command shift option E again. And this time, I think I'm going to go into DxO Film Pack. So, because I feel like this is calling for a film pack edit. Uh, now, I don't normally do this many options, if you will, uh, when I'm editing my files. But for this one, I just, you know, I feel like I'm just having fun. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up Film Pack 7 and let's see what we can get out of modifying this inside of DxO's Film Pack. So we'll let this open up and then we'll see what we get. Eventually, we'll see what we get. Okay, there we are. Um, yeah, remind me later. I don't feel like updating all that right now. Okay, so here we are inside of Film Pack 7. And as you can see, uh, you know, I don't know if I would go black and white with this, but look at how cool that is. In one click, I'm able to get a really, really cool look in this one image. Um, I'm actually a fan of that. So I may come back and just use this particular uh, preset, but I don't think, you know, I've, I've been paying attention to what I was doing color wise. I feel like I should probably stay with something that is color or that has color um, and tells the story of being early in the morning. Um, this doesn't look too bad. Let's see if I can find something, um, you know, a Supra, Fujifilm Supra. This looks excellent. I actually really enjoy this. So I may come back and go with that one uh, overall, but I like to audition these because like you have the capability to do that. I'm like whatever with this particular one, but yeah, this one looks pretty decent as well. I'm still feeling the Supra one way more, uh, the Supra 200 way more than any of these others that I've come across. Uh, I kind of like this one, uh, Supra Extra XTRA 400. Um, I do like that one. 
And I'm skipping over the black and white ones purely because uh, I want to go color on the first edit of this image. And then I'll come back and add a black and white, make two different versions of the same image. So uh, for the sake of not making this like a crazy long uh, drawn out tutorial, because this is how I edit, right? I take my time and I just immerse myself in opportunities and options. I'm not like for my personal work, uh, if I'm working for a client and you know, you got to get the job done, I usually have, you know, a cookie cutter approach to what I do and I provide that so I stay consistent with my results. But where I have the most fun is just experimenting. I've said this many times, uh, but for the sake of not making this tutorial too long or this live stream too long, I'm going to go with the Supra 200 because I really, really enjoy that one. So that's the one I'm going to go with. Let me close that real quick. And then up here at the top. So this does work a little bit differently than some of the other DxO programs where down at the bottom you'll have an apply option. Uh, but on film pack, uh, up here at the top left corner, you will have the save image and then you'll have save settings as preset. You click save image. This is what's going to take you back into Photoshop. Uh, this does not work as a plugin to on one photo raw. So you do have to be inside of Photoshop and you know, that's kind of the thing you have to think about whenever you, uh, go and make changes to an image where do you want to modify it do you want to work inside of photoshop because you're going to um need to use you know film pack 7 or something else of the sort or do you want to work inside of on one purely and use some of what plugins can be hosted with on one it's completely up to you it just depends on what it is you want to do and how you feel like editing for me I find that by modifying inside of Photoshop, like I just did, uh, works the best overall. So I like what I got here. Now, I did mention, I'm going to label this film pack color because I want two different versions of this particular file. So I'm going to turn that off, click back on here, Command Shift and E, Command Shift Option E. I'm going to label this film pack B and W. So cool. That way I have a black and white version. And then I'm going to come back up to filter. And notice I'm not making these options here, uh, DxO Labs. I'm not making these options smart objects. So, or these layers, I'm not making them smart objects. I'm actually just modifying them. Um, as their own layers, so to speak. And I think that that works out. I think that that's not a problem at all. Uh, and again, for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna go with the black and white that stood out to me the most the first time, and that was this one. Uh, I may actually just check this one. Nah, I don't like that. So for, again, the sake of making sure that I don't over uh, do this. I'm just going to go ahead and click select there and then hit save. And this is going to take me back into Photoshop. So now I have two versions of this photo. I have a color version and I have a black and white version. And, you know, it's hard for me to tell which one is my favorite right now, but you know, over now that I have two different options, it's easy for me to just go ahead and I'll, Come up here, file, export, and I'll do export as. And then once this loads through, I will export this. I usually go to a JPEG for my final images. And, you know, I leave the dimensions as they are because I don't really need to resize anything for my own personal work. If I resize it, I resize it later. And then I'll leave everything else checked there, convert to sRGB, embed color profile, all that good stuff. 
go ahead and hit export. It's going to ask me where do I want to save it. And I realize I missed one thing. I always put my quality up to the highest that it possibly can be uh, whenever I'm exporting from Photoshop. Because if I need to downsize it or rescale or do anything else, I do that in a different program. So now I'll go ahead and hit export. And I'm going to put this into my Vero file. We're going to call this train station uh, color. If I could spell station, there we go. Train station color. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to go and um, hide the color version by checking this eye icon. And now I'm on the black and white version. I'm going to hit file, export, export as. All of the settings should stay, or I guess they don't stay the same for the quality. So I got to pull that up, which that's okay. You know, uh, make sure that you get the same quality. Uh, but everything else is the same. I'll hit export and then I'll type train station B underscore W. Yeah. And then just hit save. Those are my Vero uploads. So now I can go and upload those to Vero and share them with the world. And I'll hit command and S to actually save this uh, Photoshop document. And I leave all these settings the same um and i'll hit okay i don't really care about this but it's saying hey if you hit okay on this you're going to save a large file i have plenty of storage so i'm not overly concerned about it so i'll hit okay and let that save and you can see the progress down here at the bottom i don't know why i said progress like that uh, you can see the progress though down at the bottom left of the Photoshop window. Sorry, my allergies are really uh, kicking in this morning and making things more difficult than they need to be. So once that's done saving, then I can go back into my uh, on one and continue editing as I so please. And that is, you know, in a nutshell, just Part of what I do as a workflow in order to edit images and get them out and into the world using, you know, multiple softwares. Now, if I wanted to, I could have taken this into Boris effects. I don't feel like this particular image really needed some effects inside of Boris. Uh, like the things that I like to do there inside of Boris effects is really whenever there's a verb or something that's happening. And, you know, it makes sense to jump into Boris effects and add like lightning and uh, different zoom effects and uh, all kinds of things of that sort. But for this image, I felt like Luminar um, and then as well as the camera raw presets that I added to the image. And then what I did with film pack worked out really well for stylizing. Could I have done all of this inside of on one? Absolutely. But the end result that I would have gotten from on one uh, would have maybe taken a little bit more time. I don't know. I would have to kind of play around with that because essentially I just put a glow effect on here and honed in the light from around the image. Uh, all of which could have been accomplished inside of on one, but it is what it is. So hopefully you found value in today's content and I'm sorry about my voice. It's just going away right now. And I don't know why it's doing that, but all in all, hopefully you found some value in today's content and that you will be able to take advantage of some of these deals that are going on across the cyberspace, uh, especially if there's one of these programs that you really, really wanted to get. Now's a good time to consider Now's a good time to consider getting one of those programs if that is something you're interested in. So again, I hope you found value in today's content. And if you got questions, comments, concerns, anything of the sort, please leave it in the comment section below. The links in the description, they are affiliate links. 
So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.